Well, hello, everybody. Uh, this is a first for World War II TV because it is not quite the middle of the night here, but it is midnight and 30, and we have a camera team live on a beach in Normandy for you today to bring a pretty exciting story. And um, the, our usual dream team of Duncan and Mag, but this time Duncan's appearing on camera for the show. So good evening, Duncan. Good evening, Mag. Good evening, Paul. So 78 years ago today, uh, what were you stand? Would you have been standing in front of Duncan? Well, if you look over here, where my light is shining, that there is WN twenty nine A. Okay. And then if that's turn... Widerstand's nest for those watching. That is a German position. Obviously, there's none of it left now, but that was a German defensive position that had just been started. This is the beginning of the Atlantic Wall. Things had only been started, or oh, a few months earlier. The Germans are still desperately short of material they're still desperately short of concrete the orders just come through the todd organization is you know is beginning but um there was the beginnings of a german vita stones desk just in these fields here so um if you move off forward towards the beach duncan and if you look over here this building here represented wn 29b Exactly. And this is all part okay. of Stutz Point 29. There were three separate little positions that were all part of the same German position being built along the coast of Normandy. And 78 years ago today, right now, there was a German patrol going out from this position. And this is a translation I'm reading now that was translated just today by a World War II TV friend, fan and a friend of ours in the Netherlands, Niels Henkermans who's been working on his book about the Germans in Normandy. So Neil sent me this, and this is his translation. So this is what the German account said of this incident. The night was completely quiet. Since there was a heavy overcast, it was clearly rather darker than usual, allowing to see just five steps ahead of you. Now, where Duncan and Mag are now, there are streets light in, in street lights there at the time. So imagine completely pitch black where you can't see uh, five yards in front of your face. I carry on reading the patrol. The patrol, led by Gefreiter Vickert and dispatched by the company reserve at Saint Laurent sur Mer, was between Widerstand's desk 28B and 28C. Kowalski, a private, noticed that his guard dog, and we have a guard dog with us there. If you can show our guard, we have a guard dog today representing the German guard dog. Where's our guard dog gone? There is our guard dog, folks. There is there is Bentley, uh, Duncan's dog. But he is, for the purpose of this film, a German guard dog. The guard dog jumped inland off the road and growled. At that moment, Rawr. Vickert and Kowalski, who was a, a light machine gunner, heard a suspicious sound and almost simultaneously yelled, Halt! Verdar! Stop! Who's there? After shouting a second time, the patrol received fire coming from the sea. Now, Duncan is going to show us now out towards the sea, and we're going to try and imagine what this event was that was happening 78 years ago, right, right now. So there's, fire has just started from the sea towards these Germans. It's a five-man patrol. At the same time, several hand grenades were thrown into Widerstand's nest 29B, which landed behind the guard on the beach in the courtyard of the accommodation without hurting anybody. So that's Duncan's torch there, his flashlight giving the idea of grenades going off. So imagine bang, bang, bang. Now the patrol spotted an enemy boat on the beach and opened fire and threw hand grenades. Kowalski dropped to the ground and positioned his light machine gun. At that moment, Kowalski was attacked from the rear an Englishman tried to rip the machine gun from him while two others tried to drag him onto the beach. Because of the exceptional darkness, the other men from the patrol were unable to see this. In the struggle, Kowalski could not set himself free. He did not want to give up his light machine gun either and was at risk of being dragged to the enemy boat and taken prisoner. Without letting go of the light machine gun, he took a hand grenade, armed it, threw it in front of the Englishman, tore himself loose and made it to his comrades behind the wire entanglement. And that entanglement would have been over to Duncan's right. So show us where this event is happening, Duncan. So the, the, the Vida Stondas was where you're illuminating now with the, with the flashlight. So imagine these grenades going off. This is a German patrol. 
And for the purposes of those watching, the German patrol has come under fire first. They were, came under fire from the sea. The report says the sea, but in fact, there were actually British troops, we'll tell you who they were as the show goes on, on the sand, directing fire at them. The Englishmen, who were by now under a barrage of fire from the Stutz point, pulled back and disappeared, except for one who remained behind, wounded. At the moment the hand grenade went off, some additional Englishmen were spotted crossing the road from the land side to the beach. So there already were British commandos on the beach, who'd got off the beach and were on the road area moving to a, well, we'll tell you what they were moving towards in a, in a, later on the show. We're just talking about this from the German point of view. It says British commandos are darting back across this road. The barrage from 29B was sufficiently supported by a fire from Vidas Nonsense 29A and 29C. Now, 29C was further down the beach. Duncan is walking that way toward Vidas Nonsense 29C right now. And, 20, uh, and the, the whole sky was illuminated by a red star signal flag flare. In German, a Sternbundel had been fired. So the whole sky is lit up. Do us a flare, Duncan. Show us your flashlight in the sky, giving us a flare. So imagine there's a flare up there that has lit this up there. The whole area is lit up. All of the Vida Stonzest open fire. And I'm going to show you just briefly an image. And this is from Niels again. This is a, a map the Germans themselves created after this attack here. So here, if we leave it on the screen for a minute, Duncan and Mag started over here on the coastal road here, going up towards Vida Stonzest 29A. Then Duncan moved along the, uh, the shore front here to Vida Stonzest 29B, and he's now moving across to 29C. Now, these arcs of fire here are the various German weapons that they have, says and they have a 75 millimeter pack in this area over here. And as you'll find out in a minute, they've also got a searchlight. So there's a machine gun, and there's an oval. See the oval here? Well, this is a boat. We'll tell you what this boat is and what it was doing later on. And over here is Vida Stonzest 30, uh, which was also fire. These are arcs of fire. So it's all just kicked off. Remember, folks, this happened 78 years ago, right now on this beach. So we're now going to get a bit, bit more darkness for you now because we've got away from the street, light, street light. I do appreciate there's not much to see there, but that's the point of what we're trying to do. This, it, this incident was happening in complete blackness, in complete pitch black in September 1942. So during this battle, that the, uh, they all these three positions open up, and there was a total of about 47 Germans defending these three positions, including uh, riflemen, machine gunners. NCOs and they've got flamethrowers according to the report they've got a pack 75 and they've got I say these machine guns in the light of the flare and a searchlight from Vida Stones Desk 29C the 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 target was clear were clearly visible and engaged by the 7.5 centimeter pack and hit with the third round so imagine there's a boat out there somewhere and it's been hit by the third round from this 75 it then, and I'm all still reading from the German uh, account, it then disappeared from the field of vision of the men who believed to have sunk, have sunk it. A short time later, cries for help in German were heard northwest of 29C. So where are you now, Duncan? I'm now out about 150 metres from the beach wall. Right. And northwest is over in that direction, just over there. So this is exactly where this incident is taking place. So it's the middle of the night. It's very confused. It's pitch black. There's a firefight going on. So um, this gunfire opens up and uh, the, uh, the patrol is moving out. They can hear cries for help in German, believe it or not, from this beach, exactly where Duncan is standing. The patrol, which was moving up and down between 29C and now 30A, which is over to the, uh, to the west, and the commander of Vida Stonzest 29C rushed to the location, believing to have hit, at this point, a German rescue vessel. They have no idea what's going on, who this attack is coming from, exactly what's going on. But they did observe several men swimming to shore, and a boat was still dark, the circumstances not visible. This is all from the German translation. At this point, they capture uh, three soldiers, and the description for the Germans is two Englishmen, one... Hauptmann, so a captain, one NCO, as well as a Gaullist. This is from the German account, so a Frenchman. 
Uh, they say he's from the Marine, the Marines. Patrols were immediately brought up from the company reserve, and in the presence of the regimental and battalion commander, they searched the terrain on both sides of Vida Stonzes 29B and 29C for further personnel and found immediately east of 29C an English Oberleutnant who had been uh, wounded by hand grenades. In the meantime, uh, an anti, uh, 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 another German weapon from Stutz Point 30 had opened up harassing fire. Um, its effect could not be observed because of the continuing darkness. So, Duncan, explain to us briefly what's happening on. We don't want to give too much away in this show because this is very much going to be the precursor to at least another one show and possibly another two shows about this particular operation. All we're doing now is presenting it to you from the German point of view because we thought that would be kind of neat to present something from the German point of view. Now, remember, these Germans here, it's the beginning of the Atlantic Wall. These are from uh, Infantry Regiment 726. They had been posted here sometime earlier. They would have been patrolling these beaches night after night, day after day, with very much, very little happening day to day. But this particular day, they heard a noise. They challenged that noise with the halt, who goes there? And they were fired upon from the beach. So, Duncan, what exactly was happening? What, what this boat the Germans were firing at, what was the boat? Don't tell us who it was, was it. in it yet, but what was the boat? Well, they are firing. I'm just getting into position now. If you just bear with me, I'm just going a bit forward. So approximately where we are filming now. And Matt, can you get a bit closer so we can illuminate Doug? Okay, bit... there you go. Can you there see me now? Yeah. Okay, I'm approximately in the position where three soldiers were laying dead on this beach and if you look at where my torch is just where the water is there where the sandbank is there that's approximately where a goatee a goatee was boat. on its side yeah a goatee boat was on its side uh pot ridden with bullets okay so that's approximately just there okay i'm just going to get my image a of a goatee have you got a goatee there on the screen just bear with me so a goatee boat you're probably those watching it much more familiar from seeing these or variant of these in the film, A Bridge Too Far. These are the folding canvas black uh, uh, wood uh, rubberized assault boats that could carry about 10, maybe a dozen men. And this is one of these things. It was found exactly where Duncan is. Well, we say exactly pretty much yeah. where Duncan and Mag are standing on the beach there. And yeah. uh, it was it, about 15 foot long and it can it would have brought 11 men ashore. OK. So it is here, it's on its side, it's bullet ridden. And just where we were standing just now were four soldiers laid dead face down on the sand. So this is, as those who've read the description of this uh, show, this is part of Operation Aquatint. Now, Aquatint, we'll talk about more about its purpose, what it, the men were involved in a future episode. We will touch on who some of, who, who some of these guys were as we go a little bit further to this, through this show. But the point is, this show is an introduction. It's very much a beginning, setting the scene, getting a bit of excitement going for a future examination into this very extraordinary event that, in fact, has been written out in numerous ways. So, um, Duncan, walk us up to the, uh, to the beachfront again, and we'll show... Um, the area in front of what would have been Vida Stonsdes 29C, and we'll tell people where we are. Okay. I'd just like to uh, get Mag to swing round. If you look out to sea in that direction, do you see those lights out there? That would have been approximately where a motor torpedo boat would have been laid up. Okay. So if you switch the torch off, can you see the lights out there on the screen, Paul? Yep. Just, just, just make that the distance. Yep. Yeah, just about there. That's approximately where... The MTB three double, uh, three double four would have been out there. I'll show a photo of that for everybody watch. So this was a motor torpedo boat. Yeah. And what was its nick? It's rather humorous nickname, Duncan. Um, little pisser. Little pisser. It's after, so it's after nine o'clock, so we can talk about it. We can call it little pisser. We don't quite know why it was called that, but that was its name. Its nickname was the little pisser. Yeah. So that was out there. So now I'm going to now turn and I'm going to walk back towards um, the beach wall, okay? Super. Just to give you an idea of distance across here. Okay, you've got to remember back in 42, construction would have started with beach obstacles. 
you know, uh, hed Czech hedgehogs, tetrahedrons, littering along here. Um, well, they're not they're not fully used yet, but they're beginning that process. Yeah, the, yeah, the beach beginning that some process. of that stuff. Yeah, they're starting to drag it down here and lay it out on the beach. Um, you've got to remember as well that the beach obstacles are very narrow, so there wouldn't be a lot of hiding, you know, hence why they came at night. So, uh, yeah, we're just walking back across here again. I think we're going to get wet here, aren't we? No, we're okay. So it just gives you an idea of the depth of the beach. Remember, folks, this was all happening 78 years ago, pretty much the minute where there's a little bit of um, um, debate about exactly which time this happened, because 42, 43, 44, British double summer time, German time, Berlin time, French time. You get that with a lot of the accounts, even of D-Day, two years out, exactly what time of day these things were happening. It depends on what hour they were using at the time. But basically it was happening in the middle of the night between September the 12th and 13th, 1942, part of Operation Aquatint that we will expand upon in a few minutes. So it's actually bang on low tide today where they are on the beach. At the time of this operation, 78 years ago, it was about half tide. It was the tide had been about two hours earlier. So there'd been less beach than there is today. Not okay. that it makes much difference in the pitch blackness. And we do realize that there's a bit of a kind of a Blair Witch project kind of aspect of this, of this program here with the darkness there. That's why we just thought we'd try and do something a bit different, frankly. You know, we've done these live streams in the middle of the day and we thought, what, what better, what more unique way can we go do than to be down on the beach exactly when this event happened 78 years ago? And thanks to Niels, we had that amazing German account to read. And um, we're just going to come up now to a to a plaque now we've been deliberately kind of holding back from telling you exactly where you are i'm sure some of you have read the youtube description already but the thing is this area we're walking now is much better known than, well let duncan tell us where are we duncan what what do people know this as omaha beach omaha beach exactly. we are actually on omaha beach so we are basically you've got verville samaire in front of me and in front of me now, we have St. Lawrence and Mayor. And then beyond so that, we are, Colville. Yep, and beyond that, Colville and Mayor. So now you've let the cat out the bag, yes, Omaha Beach. And of we course, have a we beautiful... didn't refer to it as Omaha Beach in this earlier version of the show because it wasn't Omaha Beach then. It hadn't been given no. its code name. This is just simply a stretch of coast. And the Vida Stonsnest names, if you know... Um, the, the how Omaha Beach was on June the 6th, you'll know the Vida Stones Nest either side of the Les Moulins uh, Saint Laurent draw were Vida Stones Nest 68 and 66. But back in 42, they were 29 A, B and C. Now, we tried very carefully when Duncan was walking down the beach to avoid showing you this monument because it kind of, as Duncan said, given the cat out the bag. But they've already been wreaths laid because the monument, as you can see there, says... It was on September the 12th. Well, it, it, what it kind of it began on the 12th of September. In fact, it, it took place between the 12th and the 13th. So we decided to come at the right. And I'll show you these photos were taken by Duncan and Mag earlier. Today. I'll show you some photos. These were taken for oh, about seven hours ago when they were on Omaha Beach for our earlier show with Linda Herview. But this is the plaque there. So you can see at that time when, we, when they were there earlier, there were no wreaths. But since they were there... I'll just show you a different photo, a different angle. There's another photo taken later today. And you can see the famous Les Braves, the brave statue there that Duncan and Mag tried carefully to avoid showing you when they were walking past that. Not one of my favorite monuments, it has to be said, um, in Norma. There it is with the, with the wreaths there. And um, this we will expand on and its purpose, who these guys were uh, in a future show. Although we do have one other location to take you to in a few minutes when they head off. So there are some flowers there to this and we were on the beach Duncan and Mag were right there right on the beach where three these three Brit, uh, British soldiers were killed and um, we'll, we'll expand on the story as they move on soon to their last location so that was brilliant stuff there Gen uh, Mag and Duncan so um, I suggest we move up to our final location guys so um, thanks very much for being on the beach grab our sentry dog <laughs> And uh, I will carry on talking while um, I'll put it back on me yeah. for a second. While I just, um, 
I just want to say, you know, to everyone that's uh, watching and listening out there that this is, uh, you know, this is uh, one of three, sorry, this is one of four um, missions that uh, the British hack uh, hatched and uh, executed along the, you know, along the French coastline. And um, it's pretty moving to be here at the right time and to think that Three of our soldiers fell out there on the beach 78 years ago, basically to the hour. Um, yeah, very, and, very and moving indeed. And what Duncan's not saying, folks, and that's why he's a little bit, I can see he's a little bit emotional there, is his great uncle was one of these men. He was not mother three, he was killed. His great uncle was on the boat, and we'll expand on who his great uncle was in a future show. But I can see Duncan has just got a little bit. Um, yeah. I'm going to give Duncan a couple of seconds there. Mag, look, look after Duncan. Get him to the car and let's go to our last location. Okay, guys? Yeah. And I'll put it back on my camera there. So that's why we brought Duncan in there because um, he had a family member involved in this very operation. So um, I'm sure there's some of you watching this. I'm sure a lot of you will be catching it after it's being live. It's an odd time of day. We just thought we'd be stupid and doing it. Not stupid, but do it at the middle of the night when these actions actually happen. But we want to have at least one panel discussion about uh, the force that was involved in this is called the small uh, scale raiding force. This is one of the early 1942. It's not quite the commandos yet. It's not the SAS yet. These are gradually evolving these organizations into, into organizations we now know. And, you know, the SAS, the, the commandos. But 42 was when all these things were starting off. And we will expand on what the purpose was. We will expand on how these men have been trained. We'll expand on who these men were in a future uh, this show. We'll probably have one panel discussion talking about how this event was planned, who the men were. Then we'll have another, so a third show, which will talk about the aftermath of this event, because we've only taken the short of the story up to a certain point of the death of three, uh, three of the participants. We will expand on the story of how these guys, some of them escaped, some of them got captured in a future show. We're just, I'm filling in now while the two uh, guys drive up to our final location to a churchyard in Saint Laurent sur Mer. So um, we're hoping you enjoy the uniqueness of this, what we've been doing today. I'm gonna to show you an image just while we're driving. This is the image Neil's so kindly sent us that is what we use to plan this show tonight. And I appreciate with the darkness, it wasn't exactly easy to see where we are, but this is the road. If you're familiar with Omaha Beach, this is the, the road that comes down through Saint Laurent sur Mer. This is where the roundabout is today. And there's the big monument there, the signal monument with the 29th division on this side and the first division on this side. So it's around here. Okay. Here's where Duncan yeah. started yeah. Uh, over at Vida Stones desk 29A. He then moved up to 29B and moved along the beach here to 29C. And here is from the German report taken where it says, Three tote Englander, three dead Englanders. And that is where Duncan was standing, where these three British soldiers were killed. And you can see this arrow here, and it says measures 150 meters. And we tried to match that out there on the sand. I was showing up driving. And this is a, another one also from Neil's. And this is what I showed you earlier with all the fields of fire. So you can see this is the boat coming. And it's a goatly boat that come from the MTB that was maybe a thousand yards offshore. And this boat came under horrendous fire from this yeah. position here, whoosh, 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 there, there, and there. And it's no wonder that three guys got killed. Indeed, some got wounded as well. And um, we thought you'd yeah. like to see those documents there. I'm just going to mute sure. uh, Duncan there because sure. um, they're as they're driving there. Some of them are swearing. It doesn't matter. We're after, we're after um, the watershed, as they call it in the BBC. So that's the images there. And so thank you so much to Niels for this because it's really kind of, cool to do this and we just thought how can we do something that's a little bit different how can we um uh, present this in a way that hasn't been done before and we know operation aquatint has been covered in various ways but never we don't think live from the beach in the middle of the night at the time it actually happened on the day it actually happened so that's kind of what we try to do there so just driving i'll put it on their feed as they're driving up because they're very much near they're very nearly there now um just driving up, here they are. They're coming into the churchyard in Saint Laurent sur Mer. So, Saint Laurent sur Mer, there's probably gonna be some people who watch this or watch it who've been on big bus tours to Normandy, some of the big ones organized by 
uh, World War II Museum or Stephen Ambrose tours or lots of the bus tours and even the minibus tours, not many of them, mostly because of a limitation of time, have the time to pull into this little parking lot, which isn't very easy for buses. And you'll notice they'll highlight the little plaque there. We've talked about this in other shows. Whenever you see a green plaque where it says Commonwealth War Graves, there are Commonwealth War Graves. So they'll go in the gate there and we'll take you to these graves. Thank you very much for that, guys. I'll unmute you again. And they're going to take you inside this graveyard. In a few minutes, we'll bring this, this show to an end. I'm just going to show you a photo. Are you coming in, guys? There we go. Just checking the gate wasn't locked. All right, here we go. So this it's not the first time we've ever filmed from the middle of the night in the middle of the night from a French cemetery. But here we are at these graves. So there we are, guys. Yeah, so your mic is on. So there they've they've already laid the reeds there. So can you flash on the names one by one? Yep. Ah, uh, Leonard was previously Pioneer Corps. There we go. And we're, and we're laying three poppy crosses there on behalf of World War II TV at there these three graves. That's it. That, just like that. That's brilliant. And slow, go down a bit so we can see the bottom part of the grave because there's a big story here that we'll explain in a future show. Go down so we can see the bottom bit of the grave. Oh, no, that, that, because the epitaph there. Can we show the epitaph, guys, before yep. you go? There we go. I want to get the idea that the epitaph is in is in Who's German. That? Have you got that, Paul? We should have. Okay. It's apparently it's still one. on me. I can't. I can't. It's still on me, not on the cemetery. Hang on. I don't know what's going on here. Hang on. Can you hear me, Paul? I can hear, but oh. it's not, it's, I'm not, because because Mag's gone out of the field, I can't put you on, I'm trying to pin you on. Something's gone wrong here. Hang on. It's not pinning on the, on your camera, because Mag's dropped her camera out now. Let me check. Yeah. Sorry about this, folks. It's not, for some reason, we can't get it to pin on. Okay, let me have a look. Let me have a look. You hold the torch. Let me just have a look here, guys. Um, I, it's 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 going on me, not on the camera. I can't get it to go on. I'm mute. How's that? How you doing? Is that fine? No, I can't hear you now. Pause for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, can you see the? Can you see the uh, the uh, the headstone? I can't, I can't bring your screen up full. I don't know why. Because Mag dropped her fit. Can you? Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll have to make do. I can't. What's up with Max? Can you go back in with yours, Max? Yeah, just go bear with us, with folks. We've got to, we've, yeah. I, I. Go back in with yours. See if you can log back in again with your when phone. It's, when I've got three feeds on, I can put the spotlight on. And I just cannot get the spotlight on. Bear with us, folks. Technical difficulties. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, we don't. We're, we're just log in, and then you should be able to hear again. Once you start hearing, your feed's back on again. Yeah, sorry about this, folks. I don't know what's going on here. I cannot get it to go on their camera. Yeah, okay. We'll come right out of it. Go back to a normal screen. Go back to the email. Go back to the email. Well, we'll just have it on split screen. I cannot, because for some reason, there's only two of us on it. I cannot get it on to pin on your screen. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on tonight. Okay. Um, the second one that's in front of me that I've got my camera on at the moment is to a, ma a major March Phillips DSO MBE. 
Royal Artillery Commando, and he was the leader of this operation. And the one on the end is an just not that. The one on the end is an A.M. Williams from a sergeant from the Royal Queen's Regiment. There you go, sir. All right, just so those are our three. Yeah, I'm just going to put in a, a daytime. Well, but the good idea. Someone just said put in a date. Here's a daytime photo of the monument while we're trying to. I don't know what's going on with the feed there, but here's a photo on a previous anniversary where they put the British flags up there and the wreaths on. Mag, Mag can't, I cannot get it on to your camera for some bizarre reason. Anyway, thank you very much for laying those crosses there. Um, that was brilliant. Now, now Mag is in now, so I should have put it on your camera. Right, finally, it's on your camera now, Duncan. So we can go brilliant. back and... Mags, you're on. You're live. That camera's live, okay? Okay. So, our three fallen is a Private Leonard. So, Major March Phillips Major. and Sergeant Williams. So, those are our three that were lying face down on the beach about 30 minutes ago, 78 Super years stuff. ago to this day. So, there we go. Okay. And as we say, to be continued. Exactly. I mean, the whole point of this was to just get a get a the seat set the scene and begin this story because there's lots of debates. We're not going to details tonight. We'll end soon. But this mm. operation, because the leader of the operation, Mark Phillips, was killed because others were captured. Um, the accounts have been a bit jumbled about what the purpose of the operation was, what the objectives were and how the aftermath went out. So we thought we'd present it from the German point of view and then we'd elaborate on it in a discussion in a future show or two. So anyway, we've achieved what we said we're going to achieve. We've told this story. There are in fact uh, 12 men involved in it and uh, we'll elaborate on who they were and exactly what the mission was about in a future episode. So, but it, as far as we're concerned, we have done what we wanted to do. We've paid tribute to three British commandos, part of small scale raiding force who were killed on this beach 78 years ago, pretty much now, by gunfire from those German positions. So, well, that was that was that. Apart from that technical difficulty, oh, I couldn't get it onto your, your camera feed for some bizarre reason. Technical hitches. That's the beauty of live TV. We did cover the story pretty well. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll put it back on uh, my screen for a second, and um, that's that's our first. Okay, had a few problems there, but that was our first middle of the night stream. And don't forget, we've got more shows coming up this week. We've got an interview with uh, Jos Grown, a, a Dutchman who wrote about 301st uh, Scream. Uh, airborne uh, uh, veterans are still with us. And we're going to do some more shows as the week goes on. We've got Market Garden coming up. So we've got the Airborne Recce Corps, Ambush at Wolf Hayes. We've got Hell's Highway. We've got all sorts of things. Imagine mm -hmm. no line. Keep an eye on the, uh, the Twitter and Facebook and you'll find out what we're doing. So do the plan. thank you very much, Duncan. I'll put it on your your uh uh feed again can you show yourselves quick oh there's the there's a union flag there there you go okay let's face it towards can you show can you show yourselves yeah. quickly because it's we uh we want to thank you very much you two for going yeah. out at a ridiculously stupid time of the day to do this <laughs> um we'll we'll have the kettle on for you mag when you get back later and so thank you very much so on behalf of world war ii tv thank you very much for enduring this and uh we hope we pay tribute to these three British commandos. And I say, we'll explain in the future show what they're all about. So I'm going to end the stream now. And uh, thanks for watching. And again, consider Patreon contributions and checking out the website to Duncan and Mag. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, there we are, three little, three little graves in a churchyard in Normandy. You know a little bit more about them. So thank you very much. I'm ending the stream now. Good night, everybody. And thanks for watching. Okay.